theater, we have learned about composition and the elements that make strong compositions on stage, including levels, depth, and focal points. Another element to consider when placing actors and even furniture or set pieces on stage is diagonals. On a proscenium stage, diagonals, just like triangles, create depth and allow the audience to see more of the show's action and characters. It also creates tension between characters, making the piece more interesting. Creating strong composition and character interactions on stage takes vision, and also the ability to step away from the stage and watch as an outside eye. This role is obviously filled by the production's director, who is the one person in charge of making sure all of the show's action can be seen and more importantly be best understood. A director's overall function is to ensure the quality and completeness of a th theatrical production, and to lead members of the cast and creative team into realizing his or her vision for the show. One way to develop the show's meaning and vision is through blocking. Blocking is the precise movement and positioning of actors on stage. It is the coordination of actors' movement used to tell the play's story. When a director is working with a cast, he or she tells the actors where they should move or be positioned for the proper dramatic effect and development of the story. These choices of blocking are generally determined by the director before rehearsal. During rehearsal, it is the responsibility of each actor to write his or her blocking in their script. There is even one person, the stage manager, that writes all of the director's blocking choices for each character and scene in one main script known as the director's notebook. As you can probably assume, a play's blocking consists of specific choices, which are made very intentionally to show characters' relationships on stage, as well as strong composition, movement, and storytelling. While blocking a show, a director uses commonly understood terms known as stage directions. These are directions given to actors by the director that tells them where to move in the scene. Here's an aerial view of a proscenium stage with the stage area sectioned and labeled. At the bottom of the picture, you can see the audience seating. Whenever an actor moves toward the audience, it is called moving downstage. Conversely, when an actor moves away from the audience, he or she is moving upstage. The history of these terms come from the time of the Renaissance when playhouses had raked stages, or stages that slanted upward so the standing audience could see the actors. Here's a modern stage with a slight rake. Notice how it slants upward as it moves away from the audience. On a rake stage, actors are literally walking up stage when they are walking away from the audience and literally walking down stage when moving toward the audience. Nowadays, audience seating is raked so the audience members can see the action on the stage. Other stage directions include stage left and stage right. This is always from an actor's perspective. If a director tells an actor to move stage left, they're asking the actor to move to the actor's left, which would in turn be the director's right. In other words, it's the director that flips the directions in his or her head for the actor's benefit. Here's a stage that is sectioned even more. Notice the terms for each of the stage parts. These terms are used by directors during blocking rehearsals when they are telling an actor where to move. On a proscenium stage, there are areas that have stronger focus than others and areas that are weaker. Obviously, down center is the most visible area of the stage and therefore the strongest area for an actor to stand or be. This area is indicated with the number one on this illustration. The second strongest place on stage is center stage, followed by down right and then down left. When blocking a show, directors often use visually strong positions when important lines are spoken or when attention needs to be drawn to a specific character or moment. Not only are there stronger and weaker areas on stage, there are also stronger and weaker areas or ways for actors to stand in relation to each other. Terms are assigned to each of these positions on stage so that the director can easily communicate stage directions to actors when blocking or rehearsing a show. The stage position terms you need to know for this class are open, closed, share, give, take, upstage, and cover. An open position is one in which the actor is facing toward the audience, or nearly so. To open is to turn toward the audience. Without sacrificing believability, an actor should try to stay open to his or her audience, particularly when speaking on stage. A closed position is one in which the actor is turned away from the audience, or nearly so. To close in is to turn away from the audience. Two actors share a scene when they are both open to an equal degree, allowing the audience to see them equally well. 
When two actors are not equally open and one receives greater emphasis than the other, the actor emphasized is said to take the scene, and the other is said to give the scene. Upstaging is when one actor takes a position upstage from another actor, forcing him to face upstage or away from the audience in order to talk to her. Generally, you should avoid this and take positions on the exact level of the character with whom you are speaking. Some basic guidelines and blocking include these. Try to play shared scenes in quarter position where each actor is angled toward each other instead of standing profile to your audience. This way the audience can better see both characters. Make turns downstage. When turning to go away from a character or off stage, it's generally a young actor's instinct to do a three-quarter turn away from their audience. Instead, always try to make your turns toward the audience. Do not cover yourself or other actors in making gestures or passing objects. To avoid this, use your upstage arm, or the arm that is the furthest from the audience. When kneeling, try to kneel on your downstage knee so that you are more able to stay open to your audience. Now, of course, none of these are hard and fast rules that you must always follow, but rather guidelines that allow you, as a beginning actor, to remain more open to your audience. Now that you know some stage directions and strong stage areas and positions, consider strong stage movement. When an actor moves from one area of the stage to another, it is known as a cross. If a director tells an actor to cross stage left, the actor would obviously move to his or her left. She would also mark this blocking in her script. The abbreviation for a cross is simply an X, so she would indicate this move in her script with the abbreviation XSL for cross stage left so that, the, that at a later rehearsal, she would remember her stage movement. Sometimes when a director has one actor cross, it may require a movement by another actor in order to balance the stage. This movement is in the opposite direction of the first actor's move and is known as a counter cross. The instruction usually given to the second actor is counter to the left or counter to the right. If only a small adjustment is necessary because an actor is covered, that actor should make it without being told. Some other guidelines when moving on stage include these. Remember that the responsibility of not covering is on the downstage actor. In other words, don't stand in front of another actor. If another actor does stand directly downstage from you, covering you, make a small adjustment. Since a moving actor usually receives the attention in the scene, make crosses downstage from other actors or furniture so that you are not covered. Obviously, if the moving actor should not receive attention, then this guideline is ignored. While stage directions are used to create blocking and strong composition in a scene or play, there's never one right way to block a scene or stage a play. Every script is open to the interpretation of the director, designers, and actors. Theater is ultimately storytelling, and there are many ways to tell a moving, hilarious, artful, intriguing, or inspiring story. As you begin your journey in theater, just remember these terms and basics in order to make sure your story can be seen and understood.